real quick. I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. I just have one question. Robin, in this, Robin says in her first interview that she texted or Candace tried to call on her and then she texted Candace back or vice versa on Messenger. But it was a text. Then in her second and third interviews, she says that she spoke with Candace on FaceTime. And she even gives, shows the motion of her showing the little girl in the back seat, the whole works. Well, Robin, can you not keep your story straight? Or have you spent too much time around Don Wales? Because if you all remember, I don't have this clip, but in the Chris McDonough interview, Don says that he knew something was up or something was wrong, that, that Summer had not been found because nobody had contacted him from the time he hung up and told her to call 911 till the time he got home. I knew, I knew as soon as I pulled up, as soon as, soon as I pulled up, I didn't get a call back from Candace saying, oh, we found her. And I come all the way out from Jonesboro. You know, and I probably made it in 30 minutes at least, if not faster. But uh, I beat all the police there, and I went straight to the bottom property. and I seen everybody look, and I knew she was gone. I mean, didn't get stopped one time. Or it, it wasn't, didn't have to slow down not once, so I know I made it in probably at least 25 minutes. Were the cops there when you got there? I think there might have been one or two cars, so I can remember. Uh, I beat all the police there, and I went straight to the bottom property. and I seen everybody look, and I knew she was gone. And, and she was un, she was unable to get a hold of Robin, so she called me and see if I could try to get a hold of Robin for her. Uh, we were able to get a hold of Robin. But then later on in the behavioral panel, which I will show, he says that he stayed on the phone with Candace the entire time of his way home and watched her run up and down the roads looking for Summer. Yelling, screaming. You know, really kind of funny. You know, I look back on that. You know, I had her on, uh, I had her on, um, messenger mm -hmm. the whole time never lost her that's really odd to me and uh took my daughter out to eat and about 7 30 that evening i was at home and summer's uh mother had called me and she said david there uh, we have an emergency uh, summer is missing and she was also trying to reach a, another one of our church members uh and her name is Robin, and, and she was un, she was unable to get a hold of Robin, so she called me and see if I could try to get a hold of Robin for her. Uh, we were able to get a hold of Robin, and Robin and myself, we made our way out to uh, uh, the, their home. Uh, I, I'd never been out to their home before. I, I had to get the address from them. Uh, but once by the time we got out there, it might have been about, oh, goodness, maybe 8.30 or so. When there was a high police presence, uh, there were aircraft already in the air. They they had the uh, they had the police dogs out. Uh, there was uh, about a hundred uh, search and rescue personnel, fire department already out there when, when we made when we arrived. Wow. Okay. And and Robin is actually somebody that that was um, she was like the the school teacher at the church, correct? I think her, yeah. her and Summer are very, very close. They, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Robin and, and her, Summer uh, were, were, they were very close. Uh, and uh, uh, Robin taught her Sunday, or her Sabbath school uh, class. Yeah, I think that's one of the, one of the ones that Candace referred to that Summer would always light up when she would see her at church. Yes, yes. Do you, do you, do you and the family you, at this point, or you or the family, I should say, do you guys, believe that summer could have wandered off at all now that you know how much of that terrain has been searched with the dog i just uh summer's dad told me that uh two of the dogs and, and like i said I, I did not hear this from the police this is this is what summer's dad Don told me he said two of the dogs picked up her scent on the driveway and then when they got at the bottom of the driveway to where their road is the scent stopped is uh is what he told me <clears throat> the um I, I really don't know. I, I, we're just baffled. I was taking my um, little girl's pictures before her dance class, and I noticed I was missing calls from Candace. Before I even had a chance to call her, she messaged me again on Facebook Messenger, and she was just in a panic mode. And she says, Summer's gone. We can't find her anywhere. The police are here searching. And I said, I'll be right there. And Candace called me on FaceTime and said, Summer's missing. And I was just in shock. 
class and Candace called me on FaceTime and said, summer's missing. And I was just in shock. Don't think I realized what a big deal it was though until I actually showed up at their house and there was helicopters everywhere and police everywhere and search dogs everywhere. And then I was like, oh my goodness, this is really happening. You know, she's really, she's really missing. They're not finding her that easy. Mm -hmm. So it went from shock to fear because it was getting cold outside and the sun was setting and, and it was pretty much dark almost when I got there anyway. And I just thought this poor little girl's going to have to sleep outside tonight. And of course, I didn't know where she was. I didn't know if someone had taken her. I mean, there's all kinds of theories up in the air and I just didn't know what to think. There's a lot of confusion, fear. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I was scared of her. Mm -hmm. Back to the day uh, she disappeared. Okay, so I was walk me through that. Through, okay, so I was taking pictures at my little girl's dance recital. It wasn't actually the recital; it was the practice for the dance recital. And we had a big backdrop, and I had my fancy camera, and I was getting <laughs> pictures of all of her classmates, all of her, the kids in the class in the dance class. And uh, I saw my phone, and it was Candace, and she was calling me on Facetime. And of course, I couldn't answer because I was taking pictures. What and, time was it? Um, well, dance class starts at six, so it was probably around six thirty or seven, I would imagine. Okay. I didn't look at the time, but I had you it was... seen her any earlier that day, Candish? Uh, no, mm -mm. I hadn't seen her talk to her. Okay, yet. so that was no, the first that was, contact that, was the that first day. First contact, yeah. Okay. What happened? And, um, she called me maybe five times on Facetime, and uh, I didn't answer to any of them until class was over, and I'm cleaning up all my camera equipment, putting away the backdrops and everything, and I get a um, a call from a friend of mine, David Dotson. I get a call from him, and he said, "Candace has been trying to call you." And I said, "I know. I saw it. I wasn't able to answer. What's up?" He goes, "Summer is missing," and I was like, "Oh my goodness! I didn't realize at that moment." How how, in, how huge that was, but I was like, oh, wow, that's bad. Um, I'll call her. So actually, I don't even think I had to call her. I think she interrupted that call and she called me and uh, she got on my FaceTime screen. I've got my little girl in the back seat and she's like freaking out on my screen there saying summer's gone and I called the police and I don't know what to do. And, and I said, Candace, I'll be right there. I'm coming. But I said, first, I got to get my little girl home got to get my husband to put her to bed and I'll be right there. Mm -hmm. So I go home and I get a bag and I put flashlights and snacks and all the stuff in there thinking I'm going to be up all night looking for this little girl. And I don't think I even got to the house until probably nine o'clock because I had to do some other things before I could leave. Um, so I think I got there around nine and uh, they wouldn't let us in. Okay. We, uh, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, the, no, you're, you're fine. Yeah, they wouldn't let us in. We, I parked my car down there um, at the little road across um, from the main road and walked up there and they had it all taped off. Helicopters flying around everywhere. There was search dogs. There was police officers and lights and it was just craziness. And at that moment, I realized, wow, this is a big deal. This is not just a small beans. We can't find her. This is this is huge. Yeah, they wouldn't let us in. We, I parked my car down there um, at the little road across um, from the main road and walked up there and they had it all taped off. There was Well, okay. The two of them are telling two totally different lies why we don't know. But somebody's got to be lying between the two of them. Because if she was on FaceTime with Don the entire time his way home, which would have been between 6.30 and 7, and Robin says that she called her on FaceTime between 6.30 and 7, five times, not just once, but five times she was ringing the phone off the hook. And then David Dotson calls Robin and says he had talked to Candace during this time. And then Candace calls Robin again on FaceTime. How was that possible if she was on the phone or on FaceTime with Don Wells the entire time he was headed home? This is not making any sense, guys. Somebody is lying here. And I think they need to all be called out about it. And I'm sorry if y'all think that I'm going after Robin, but come on, I can't stand a liar. And that's what this is. I mean, somebody is flat out lying. I mean, Robin herself told two different lies about texting and then actually speaking to Candace. And Don says he didn't talk to Candace and then he did. And now we have the conflicting story that three different people supposedly talked with Candace between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. But you have to remember, one of those people was supposedly on the phone with her the entire time. So how did she talk to Robin and David Dodson? Keep that in mind and watch. And I'm sorry if y'all think that I'm going after Robin, but come on, I can't stand a liar. And that's what this is.
I mean, somebody is flat out lying. I mean, Robin herself told two different lies about texting and then actually speaking to Candace. And Don says he didn't talk to Candace and then he did. And now we have the conflicting story that three different people supposedly talked with Candace between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. But you have to remember, one of those people was supposedly on the phone with her the entire time. So how did she talk to Robin and David Dodson? Keep that in mind and watch this, guys. Just watch all these little clips. I was ready. I was like, let's do this. Let's like, we get the flashlights out. Let's get some snacks in our bags. You know, it's going to be an all nighter, you know, <laughs> and they wouldn't let us. They wouldn't let us um, even go up Police there. Blocking the entrance to Ben Hill Road. Lane says she offered assistance the only way she could. And we showed them some pictures of Summer. The police didn't have very good pictures of her or some of them hadn't even seen a picture of her yet. Later that night, she was granted access to the Wells home. At that point, there's really nothing I could do. They just needed someone to pray with them. Do you feel really helpless in that situation? Because you want to do something. It makes you feel better to do something. But we couldn't, so we just prayed and we just hugged on them and loved on the boys. And they, of course, were just shattered and just confused, as was I. Lane says police wouldn't allow them to assist in the search. And then we had to go home, and it was really hard driving home with her not being found. Helicopters everywhere, search dogs everywhere, police everywhere, and there's nothing that you can do. Four months. Just talk to me about what your involvement has been and how you've tried to help and make, make, make things better. I'm really just a friend of the family and everything that I've tried to do is just to be an encouragement and a support to the family. That's really what I feel like my place is mm -hmm. and I feel like as long as I do that I stay out of trouble because yeah. <laughs> I get in trouble easy. So. Oh, okay. well, I don't want you to get in trouble. Um, can you talk to me about what kind of a Sunday school pupil summer was? Yes, I love talking about that. Um, <laughs> summer was such a sweet little student in our mm -hmm. class. She loved to come to Sabbath school, and every time she'd come in, she'd just run up and give me a big hug. Getting her to sit in the chair was not very easy because she had a lot of energy. I think pretty mm -hmm. much everyone has heard that. She yeah. had a lot of energy. But um, I was actually the assistant Sabbath school teacher. I wasn't the main one, so that actually allowed me to kind of spend a little more time with her because the teacher was teaching and then I could you're hurting her. yes exactly she would like you know sit on my lap and we do things and uh, motions to songs and everything together she just mm -hmm. um she actually liked to help a lot so whenever we had different little projects or craft projects you know the kids would come over and take their turn to do their craft oh no she wanted to help with everything so she was helping with the prep work and as long as I kept her little hands busy she was really good excellent behavior so she just needed a task to do to keep her busy. But she was really a sweet. Did she like church? She loved church. She just loved to run around and love on everybody. Yeah. And I know that when people watch on some of the clips that they've seen, she's usually loving on me, but she loved on a lot of people there. There was a lot of people that she would go to and just hug and, mm -hmm. and, um, play they would have like little toys and things for her to play with during church and stuff and mm -hmm. she was just a very loving child we got lots and lots of hugs and lots of love from her mm -hmm. yeah. well can i ask a difficult question yeah well i mean this is sometimes you got to ask obvious questions you know but it's, it's what i have to do uh what what was the emotions that you felt when you when you heard about what, you know, the first the first time you heard that something had happened yeah the first time i heard something had happened i was just, I was just in shock really um i was i had just finished doing a photo shoot for my little girl yes yeah, so after it got grown and i didn't, didn't want it no more oh so this is after it was before summer before summer came up, okay. Okay. Yes. okay okay so you drove from, I'm just trying to get my head around right. what kind of gap you have in time between the time well, you saw her and the time you got back. I probably made it home in half the time it normally would because right. I almost lost it in one curve. And uh, I was able to pass in double yellow line all the way without hindrance of any kind. I was able to fly. But when I, when I, when I first come to the house, I knew they was looking all over the, the, the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So I drove straight to the bottom property and down to the creek mm -hmm. and I noticed my neighbor walking this way around the hill and I seen my three boys together on this side of the hill and my heart just sunk right there and I knew she was gone I knew it yeah I knew somebody she was gone 
Because I knew, you know, and that's, that's 25 minutes later and she's, nobody's found her. She's gone. Oh. So I drove, turned around, went back up to the top, and I think there was one or two cop cars there, if I remember right. And they started asking all kinds of questions. I kept trying to tell them she's gone. She's gone. She's not here. And uh, just like a, I don't know, just, I don't know, then the cop, more cops kept filtering in. And then we had uh, all kind of people with trailers and stuff and SUVs, and they literally blocked Beach Creek, bottlenecked Beach Creek, Ben Hill Road. You couldn't go nowhere. How much time had passed from yeah. the time you got the call till that happened? Um, you know, I mean, you know, from before I first got home, you know, and then I'm talking to the cops up there, and then, you know, another 20, 30 minutes, and everything just starts getting bottlenecked. You can't even when, leave there. When did you see Candace after all? When was the first time you saw Candace after you got this news? After your, well, you know, when I first pulled up there, you know, she was freaking out. And, uh, because in that area, what do you think caused that? That's a good question because I don't know how I could have kept her on messenger because she got in her mother's truck, drove all around and asking people. Cause I watched her I and mean, she was driving her mom's truck right on messenger and she was driving all in the area looking everywhere for her in her mother's truck. And I never, I don't think I lost her the whole time all, all the way. Hmm. What was the first, what was the first thing she said to you in person though? So I says, um, Oh, when I seen her, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't remember because there was cops questioning her and cops questioning me and probably trying to keep us apart, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.